Ladies and gentlemen, get ready to listen to some mumbly jumbly. All the way from St. Albans, your host for tonight, Abs the Magic, Super Coach Godfather. Hello to all my friends out there. Thank you for tuning in. I just want to, before I start my podcast, I just want to say thank you to everyone that's supporting this channel. It, it means so much to me. And, um, and in return, I'll give you what you want. And, um, and that's information. So there's information coming from all different podcasters. And I'll be one of those podcasters as well, hopefully, if we can succeed. So we're trying. Now, uh, feedback is always important, whether it be positive or negative as long as it's constructive and I received constructive con- uh, feedback yesterday uh, in a negative part of it which I appreciate because it's actually helped me uh, it's helped me to improve because I, I need this and I received positive feedback which also helps me it's not to give me an ego boost but it's to build my confidence and people like the dentist on in Twitter I love this but I never met him but I love this bloke already and um, I love what you're doing, mate. Very entertaining, informative. I mean, this this is feedback is what I thrive on because I, I want to make people happy. And um, I, I just want to say thank you to all those people out there that have given feedback, even if it's negative, because negative improves me, positive drives me. So I need both. So thank you once again to everyone out there that's given me some feedback. Now today we're going to talk about Warpool. Yeah, he came to my attention when a friend of mine, uh, Dan Evans, on the Richmond Supercoach page, said he's thinking about getting Warpool, and he asked, what is your opinion on him? Now, I don't actually have an opinion yet because I haven't done the research, so that's why we're going to research him now. Not only did he appear from my friend Dan Evans here, but on Twitter, uh, my good friend uh, from Supercoach Edge, Damon, also posted about Warpool. So now it came to my attention, okay... Everyone's talking about Warpool, so let's see, with some research, with, we're going to do this research together, with some research, what we can dig up on Warpool. Okay, now the f- first step with Warpool, with our research, is we're going to work out how much it costs. So we've gone into our team picker, and we can see Warpool here at 309k. Three, three so 309. Now, if you hear the word free, I can't say th. So I apologize. Uh, 309K, divide that by 5.5. And that equals 56. Now, 56, what, how much does he need to make? How much does he need to score to make 150K? Because we're always looking for 150K. We don't know who came up with this rule, but it's a good rule. It's, it's actually, it's logical. Uh, a trade is worth 150K. So. It's usually an extra an extra ten, an extra ten points gives you fifty k. Uh, an extra twenty points is a hundred k. So we need an extra thirty points on top of his his current price for him to make one fifty k. So he needs to average eighty six. That's what we're looking for uh, from Warpool. Now let's see if he can do that. So let's go to some other sites. The first website we look at is FootyWire. That's always first. So first thing we do is check the price. Second one is a footy wire. Now, f- uh, we're looking for 86. So we don't count 2020. That's crossed off. I explained to you in the previous videos why. Uh, 2019 looks very impressive. We're going to look at 2019 in a minute. We're going to go back to 2019 and see what he did. Uh, 2022, it didn't look too good. 2021 didn't look too good. So uh, going by the last two years, it, this trade's not gonna work. Going by what he did in 2019, the trade is gonna work. So let's work out what he did in 2019 and what he did in 2021. The first website we're gonna look at is afltables.com. Uh, this gives you pretty much all the goss from last year. This tells you even his date of birth. So this makes him 24 years old. So that's a good age. Actually, it's his birthday in three days time. <laughs> Happy birthday, mate. Now, disposals. This is the section that I look at the most. Uh, how many disposals is he getting per game? So we're looking at a couple of 20s, 
a lot of 15s and 12s. I mean, we don't know what position he is yet because even though we do know, we're, we're pretending like we don't know because we're doing a research, okay? Um, so disposals is 26, 25, all right? Uh, kicks to handball ratio. Now, that's very important because the more kicks he gets, the more points he gets. Uh, if he handballs a lot, he's only get a lot of two-pointers, where if he kicks, he'll get a lot of four or five-pointers, depending on, on how effective the kick is as well. So let's look at his kick-to-handball ratio. Uh, in round seven, 14 kicks, 12 handballs. That's not bad, because his kick-to-handball ratio is higher. But in round 15, it's nine kicks to 16 handballs. That's not good. We don't want a player having 25 handballs or... And, and 10 kicks a game, which is 35 disposals. We want him to have 25 kicks and 10 handballs. That, that's where the points are. So this is a little bit alarming. I don't actually like my players to have a lot of handballs. Let's have a look at his time on ground. Uh, looks like he doesn't have a tank. 82% uh, is his highest, which 82% is normal. But 76, 72, 72, that, they're, they're low. Uh, 55, I mean, I don't know if it was a sub that game, so I'm not going to find out either because there isn't a website that can tell me if he was a sub. I wish I can find that. If you do know a website that tells you if he's a sub, please put it in the comments below. I would love that. I would love to find that website. Um, and he got 11% time on ground, so he could have been a sub or injured. We don't know, but that's not important. Now, the, the next step is to work out with 26 disposals and 25 disposals, what did he score? Now, that's important, because um, when you've got that many disposals, I'm expecting 90 to 100, but the handballs is sort of concerning. So let's have a look at what he scored when he had 26 and 25. So we'll pull, where are we? Okay. Round 15, he had the 25 disposals, 82 points. That, that's a no good. Um, yeah, that that is concerning. Uh, so the question is, how do we get him to a hundred points? What does he have to do? Uh, he had 20, 20, 25 from memory, so he probably needs another ten disposals. And if they're handballs, he probably needs another yeah, say ten disposals. So he needs thirty five disposals to get to a hundred. That's alarming. And the other one was 80 as well. So both of them, it's these figures are not good. They're alarming. Okay, but the next thing we're going to do is look at, uh, go, go to dfsaustralia.com and look at his CBAs. And maybe that can give us some answers. James Walpole. Okay, here you are. The, the, you know, the green ones are okay. They're good. We're happy with green ones. Yellow ones are awesome. All right, when you see yellow color, it's what you want but we don't have any yellows here, but that's understandable. Now, James Walpole in round two had 66% CBA and 71, now 71 is not bad. Uh, Jay Newcomb was 81%. O'Meara was playing, had 45% and Mitchell was 50. So he was actually ahead of both O'Meara and Mitchell in the midfield. So that's that's important to note. Okay, so when, when people say, uh, when there's no Jagger Amira, there's no Tom Mitchell, okay, uh, Warpool will play better. Well, Warpool's already ahead of them uh, with CBAs that game. Let's actually have a look at round eight. Now, I'm, I'm expecting a well, not really because I saw his scores before, but let's have a look what he scored in round eight. Okay, round eight, 59. Oh, boy. Uh, how many disposals did he have in round eight? 15 disposals with 71% time on gr uh, ground in the midfield. Six kicks, nine handballs, two tackles. Okay, um, I'm not liking what I'm seeing so far. I'm sorry. Uh, okay, now in 2019, uh, his scoring is awesome. Started at 395k, went to 577k. So if you go by these figures, uh, he, he's a lock and you throw away the key, but why didn't he do this last year when he had 71% time on ground? Why did he only score 59? Maybe he was a tagger. Now, we don't know that. So that's a possibility. So we're going to also check that out. This is dailyfantasyrankings.com.au. 
And now we've gone into the taggers section. Now we want to see when Hawthorne tagged, which players they tagged. All right, let's have a look. Let's see if Warple, well, actually it's not going to tell us if Warple tagged or not, but we're going to find out if they actually used the tag in that week. So in round seven, they tagged Langdon from Melbourne. And in round 10, they tagged Lockie Neal. But Walpole scored that 59 in round 8. So he wasn't used as a tagger. So that eliminates the tagging role. Now I've gone back to dfsaustralia.com. Now I want to see 2019 stats for CBAs. But unfortunately, I don't have them. I've only got 2020. We've gone back to dfsaustralia.com, and this time, to, to find more information on Warpool, we've gone to heat maps, we've, and we got lucky, we found something. So, here we go. We're looking for possessions, time on ground, and it seems like in, in 2019, he had more time on ground. So it looks like, as you can see, the more time on ground he gets, the more touches he gets, the more points he gets. So his key is time on ground from the looks of it. Uh, whereas in 20, uh, well, it was last year, he didn't have much time on ground. So this could be the key, the time on ground. And obviously, possessions help. Like he, he's only gone under 20 possessions once for the whole year in 2019. So it, it actually now looks very promising than what it looked before. So roll is the key, and so is time on ground. Now, in, in games where he's had, like, 36 touches, 34 touches, 32 touches, he scored big. In games where, let's have a look which round he scored bad, uh, round seven. So what did he do in round seven? Had 25 touches. Well, I don't know, maybe he had some poor disposal efficiency, but... It's looking promising now. Uh, well, to be honest, at the start, I didn't want to have Warple in my team, but looking at this, I may have even changed my own mind. Um, I don't mind these stats. Now, all we want to see from Warple is him playing in the middle and Warple being the second midfielder in that team. Uh, if we can see Warple doing, having centre, centre bounce attendances, if we can see Warple hitting... Look, 85% time on ground. Uh, this is going to be huge. He, he can have a big year. So let's have a look. Let's have a look at, the, uh, at one of these heat maps and see where he was playing. It's pretty much starting in the middle and playing everywhere. That's on that one. That's round 22. Let's have a look at round 21. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if that's defence or forward line, so it seems to have a big heat map down there, but he's playing on the wing as well, so it's a little bit different. I mean, he has a different role looks, but from the looks of it. Let's have a look at round 20. Back in the middle again. So it looks like he's... Actually, in the middle, he's really good. Round 17, back in the middle, he's, he's all over the place. So final thoughts on Warpool. Uh, there is a difference between 2019 and last year. We had two different coaches. Uh, 2019, we had Clarko. Last year, it was Mitchell. Clarko loved him. Mitchell didn't show much love. Now, let's see what role he has in the preseason. We, it's so important. Because uh, if Walpole's going to play in the forward line like he did last year, he, he's a not good. But if he's going to play the same as he played in 2019 under Clarko, then all more gold. All right, so keep a close eye on him. That is my, that, those are my final thoughts. Okay, now we're coming to the end of the review. Uh, thank you for joining my channel. Uh, please don't be shy to subscribe. It's your subscriptions that will get, keep my channel moving. Without them, um, I'm going to be at a halt. And um, so please, please show the support. And always remember, it's nice to be important, but it's important to be nice. Ciao for now.